the next question I had was, or the next set of questions, more to do with da'wah or um, encouraging people or spreading the message of Islam, essentially. Um, and I think blogging theology is probably the best answer for that, um, which will come on in more detail um, further down the line. But in terms of, from your perspective, and I did watch a recent interview where you said that, look, you have to be more nuanced when someone asks you what's the best way to give da'wah or a book that you recommend, because it depends on the other person, essentially, their level of yeah. intellect and various other factors. Yeah. So yeah. let's say um, a working class English person, <laughs> <laughs> from your perspective and experience, um, what would you say is a recommended way of bringing them towards Islam? Uh, that's a good question. I, I mean, I, I'm not even sure what a, an English working class person it, it is. I mean, I, I mean, I know what you're saying, yeah. but I mean, again, gender, age, uh, education level are, are relevant there too. They're not just all one bunch of people. Mm. They're, they're, obviously, that would be very insulting and uh, inaccurate. Um, I, I, I think what, what, what one of the ways the Muslims in general can give dawah is, uh, and, and many Muslims do this extremely well, is simply to be good neighbors, actually. And that might sound an odd thing to say, but, you know, if, if you demonstrate kindness uh, and uh, and goodwill and care in, in, in very practical ways um, with your neighbors, your non-Muslim neighbors, then that really communicates a great deal about the nature of being a Muslim. Because Muslims are, are uh, are, demo, are practicing their faith when they do this. The Sunnah of the Prophet, I repeat, you know, the way he treated even his enemies, you know, they, that, that, that uh, I forget the, the story in detail, but there's a woman who basically threw trash or dumped trash outside uh, on, on the Prophet and so on. And the way he responded and, and, and ultimately won her over was extraordinary. And, and that might not have involved any preaching or any discussion of Tawhi, for example. I mean, may have done, I don't know. But the point of that story is the way he won her over was through uh, you know, non retaliatory you know, n not retaliating and attacking her, but seeing beyond her behavior to the wounded, hurt person beyond that. And, and, and in a way, helping her to understand who he was by his responses to her. And I think there's a great wisdom there and how to relate to people. Um, but I mean, of course there are, you know, using words as well, not just actions. Um, uh, depending on who the neighbors are, you know, if they're Christian neighbors or they're atheist neighbors, you know, there are ways of talking to people which uh, don't alienate them, encourage them on a journey. Um, so it's quite a skill. And I think it, it requires a lot of goodwill and patience um, and also remembering there's something that I, I forget, but it's good to be reminded, I guess, is that it's God who turns hearts. Mm -hmm. It's not us. We don't make people Muslims. Um, is that the Jordan Peterson thing? I mean, he, this guy has been given so much dower now, probably more than anyone else on the planet. I mean, some of the best dower carriers in the world, you know, uh, ha have um, approached him and spoken to him at length. I mean, you know, I don't think he needs any more dower, really. I mean, that's just my view. But I could be wrong. I mean, it's between him and God, really, now. But it's God who's going to turn his heart. He doesn't need more information. He doesn't need more arguments. If, if he ever did, he needs, he himself needs to make that journey to uh to the towards the truth uh and that's between him and god there's nothing we can do i think anymore about that for him I mm. think. and he's not a working class guy he's anything but 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 um that is the limitations of dao as well that it's not like we're promoting a a secular ideology and trying to persuade people to become good you know good socialists or or good marxists or something you know embrace these political philosophies and change it it's not really like that. It, it's an invitation to uh, uh, to to embrace the truth that we already kind of know. Actually, deep down, the fitra is is there. Hopefully, and it echoes a part of our created nature. So it's not an alien creed. It's just reawakening our own instinctive, intuitive beliefs about God, about the world, about who we are, which are already within our nature. Um, that's one way of putting it. And uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I think um, you're right in the sense or that manners or how you act is a universal language, I guess, irrespective of someone's um, intellectual ability or social class or everyone recognises it. I think sometimes the difficulty is for 
the non-Muslim to see a connection between between that good manners, good actions, and Islam, um, because it depends on the relationship. But I found, for example, uh, when I was younger, I spent some time as a summer job working in a warehouse where I was able to interact with, like, let's say, the average working class, and the 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 level of conversation and everything is a bit different to say when you're in an office environment. But I do feel as though you can have the most impact in long-term relationships. Say if you're working in an office for over a year, you've got a better opportunity being able to spread a good message of Islam or do da'wah in indirect, subtle ways rather than, um, let's say, street da'wah, which there's a place for and there's a need for as well. But I just think most people, I would say it's a very small minority that are interested in like, the very minute or intellectual points um, that, say, Sapiens Institute addresses uh, or other Dawa organizations. I think most people, they're impacted by the kind of what you spoke about in terms of like matters of the heart, how you make them feel.